Welcome back, everybody. It's time again for the Pedego Podcast as we ride along on the e-bike revolution. Join us each week as we talk with the entrepreneurs behind the movement and the love stories of those just riding along. And that's where we're at today. We've got a lovely uh, rider with us today here, Dr. Uh, well, I'll let you introduce you. It's Dr. Miriam. Inter- welcome to the Pedigo Podcast. Oh, good. Uh, hello. <laughs> Happy to join in. I don't know, I don't know how to uh, introduce you. Should I start by saying that you're Dr. Miriam Lieberman? That sounds so official. Uh, and then um, we're going to talk about this uh, passion you have for riding an e-bike. That sounds fun and free. Yeah. Is there a conflict in my mind? Are, are doctors not supposed to be fun and no, free? No, no. We're, we're just as human as anybody else. I recently retired, but before I retired, actually writing the Pedago was sort of an integral part of my <laughs> medical life in the sense that I used it to commute to work, and I had to build up for that. They tell me it was 12 miles to work. It's not like around the corner. Um, it was 12 and a half miles each way, so it was 25 miles round trip, and it was actually one of the best part of my day. It took a lot of nerve initially to do that because I was recovering from so many surgeries and orthopedic problems, which is actually what led to the e-bike. My balance was poor. There were just a lot of issues. So it took about six months, six to eight months to get up the nerve to ride through Hidden Valley, which is sort of a valley mountain road connecting the city where I work to my home. Mm-hmm. And actually, to ease my terror, uh, Linda Coburn, one of the... <laughs> Your terror? You were terrified to get on an e-bike and ride it here? Terrified to ride this mountain road that ha- was oh. winding. Oh, yeah. It involved going through 8% grades, through the mountains. There oh, were no wow. bike lanes. There were no shoulders. There was traffic whizzing by. This is just riding around your neighborhood. Yeah, so yeah. Was, right, right. So it was a matter of really stealing myself for more serious road riding where I didn't have the protection of the bike lane. So Linda Coburn, one of the owners of Pedago 101 in Westlake here in California, actually teamed up with me to sort of like ease my nerves. You're kidding. Wow. And one of the biggest problems that I hear from many people is they're too afraid to ride on the street. Exactly. They'll ride on the uh, cycling paths. In the neighborhood, on a trail the... behind their house maybe, but not out right. on the road. Right, mainly on the trails. And we really don't have trails here. Um, I have to drive at least 30 minutes to get to some nice bike trails either along the beach And actually, my goal was incorporating cycling, which I just love, but was disabled from doing, into my daily life. Yeah. To use it for shopping, to use it for commuting, going to work, and then, of course, for adventure rides, which I certainly did plenty of. Well, we're going to talk about all um, of that. Let me just cover some ground so those are just joining us. Here on the Pedigo Podcast, we're with Dr. Miriam Lieberman, and you were what, an internal medicine physician? Yeah, internal medicine. I'm I'm still licensed. And you live where? In Westlake, California? Is that where I heard you say? I live in Newbury Park, which is in Thousand Oaks, California. It's midway between Santa Barbara and Los Angeles. Yeah, it's kind of way out at the uh, western end of the valley. They're close, not too far from the ocean and the beach. It's not on the ocean, but it's closer than I am to the ocean. 30 minutes. Yeah. Right, right. We're 30 minutes from the coast. So nice, warm environment. You would think there are lots of people riding bikes, but maybe not a lot of internal medicine physicians riding a bike to work. Were you Uh, laughed at? Did people look at you strangely? Did they say, why are you doing this? Well, I started quite a while ago. I started over six years ago. Okay. So at that time, e-bikes were still newer. Mm-hmm. I was actually the only one I knew that was riding an electric bike. Say, yeah. Pedigo 101 here was only uh, six months old at the time when I found the shop and ordered and customized my bike. So at that time, it was fairly new. Those were the days where other people were calling us cheaters. And, <laughs> and for me, it was just one of the most liberating things in the world because it helped to get me back in physical shape. So can we talk about that for a minute? What had happened in your life? You're at the tail end of your career because you said you just recently retired. And so what? You started having health issues. I don't know how much you want to go into Um, those, but was keeping you from being active and mobile? 
Right, right. I, I was actually rear-ended 20 years ago, oh, and it completely yikes. changed my life. Oh, so for many episodes, I was unable to drive. I had to lie down in the car and had my husband take me to oh, work on a God, mattress so that yikes. was rigged up in the van. I had multiple orthopedic surgeries. I mean, I totally, I think I've had over 30 surgeries oh, my in God. my life. I stopped counting yikes. at 30. So rehab from all these things was always an issue. So it got to the point where I really couldn't engage in a lot of activities. You got some serious problems going on. If your husband's driving you with a mattress in the back, that's serious <laughs> stuff. Here. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah, that happened. Uh -huh. somewhere along the way, either somebody told you or you saw a bicycle and said, I'll bet I can do that, particularly because it's an e-bike. Talk about that epiphany. How did it happen that you stumbled sure. onto bike? Well, um, I rode bikes in my childhood, and I rode bike all through college. That was how I got around at UCSD Okay. Uh, at the university. So you were familiar, but so, had you ridden a bike in a long time? That's when you were a kid. We usually give them up somewhere along the way. And then in my 20s, and then in my mid-20s, I started practicing, and I had two sure. children by then. So then things were consumed by work and child rearing. But actually, it was always my dream and my fantasy to get back on the bike. Many of us feel that way. We've talked about the other shows, me included. I loved riding a bike when I was a kid, and probably up into my 20s I rode a bike. And then somewhere along the way, mm -hmm. kids, family, career, I put the bike away, and I never pulled it out again. And I don't know why. It's still rusting in the garage there somewhere. What is it that right. makes us think this isn't for adults, this is just for kids or the youthful? Um, well... I still rode very intermittently, but was really disabled from doing it. I mean, yeah, even obviously. including after I had my knee surgery, I had ACL reconstruction in my knee, and then it took about two years to recover from oh the multiple goodness. spine and knee surgeries. And then I got on the bike and I rode for about a year and then I just couldn't do it. I would limp, I, I had spinal stenosis as well. And I was just disabled to do it, from doing it. So I've actually started looking at electrical assist bike concurrently. Mm -hmm. But at that time, it was a lot more primitive. They were called hybrid bikes. The bike shops either wouldn't let me demo it, no, which I thought was no. ridiculous. How do I know that it wasn't going to get up the hill? And then I was visiting Mammoth. I was getting back into skiing, and I visited Mammoth, and I saw Pedago Rentals. That was start, it. And yeah, that was it. That was it. And I thought, this is perfect. All the different models. And I thought, you know, everything just kind of came together. Yeah, makes and sense. And that was like, yeah. And that was six to seven years ago. Within a few months, I saw an advertisement in a local magazine for the Pedago shop. And it was literally blocks from my office. I didn't even know it, yeah. They had just opened up a few months before. I mean, I was going to seek the Pedago, but I thought I would have had to drive all the way to Manhattan Beach, uh, Huntington had, Beach. Yeah, didn't know they had dealers everywhere. All right, so yeah. they kiddingly told me, and before this interview, that they kiddingly call you now Dr. Feelgood because you're so passionate yeah. and you feel so good. Yeah. doesn't sound like yeah. you felt very good for a very long time. And something about this, you always had an interest in bikes, you tried to intermittently continue riding bikes, but it was that rental experience at Mammoth, of all places, up at a ski resort, that said, I can um, do this. You know what? Actually, I didn't even rent it at the time. I saw it. Okay. It was electric. It was a lot of different models. So I figured once, you know, once I get off the mountain, this is what I'm going to look into. And if yeah. I have to drive a few hours to Huntington Beach, where the closest shop that I knew of at the time was mm -hmm. going to be, or whether I have to drive back to Mammoth, this is what I was going to do. That's determination. Was, yeah, that's yeah. determination. And it was more specifically Pedago because of just all the different models. And actually, that was quite a challenge ergonomically. And the great thing about Pedago is I was able to continue customizing the bike to make it ergonomically comfortable for me. So how did you customize? How does Dr. Feelgood make the bike feel good to her? You know what? The Interceptor was the most comfortable for me but I found the handlebars were too wide, so I narrowed the handlebars from 
26 to 24 inches. I had the city commuter adjustable stem put on. Eventually, after a few years, as I wanted to keep reaching the ground uh, with my toes, I even switched out the 26-inch wheels on the 26-inch frame for a 24-inch. Yeah. Uh, because I ride so long, I became so addicted to incorporating cycling into my lifestyle in terms of commuting, other rides, shopping, adventure riding, that because I frequently did pretty long rides, like 60 miles, wow. um, at the end of the ride, I could get a little tired. I, I still wanted that safety aspect of being able to get the ball of my foot, you know, onto the ground. So in continuing to customize the bike, my maximum ride was 100 miles and oh my goodness. no problem. Dr. Miriam, no you couldn't problem. walk 100 feet. You, your husband had to put a mattress in the back of the van to get yeah. you to work. Yeah, because I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't sit to drive for like a total of three years of my life. I couldn't uh, drive. I was standing up to work, so I could swim, I could stand, but I couldn't sit for quite a long time. So how did it feel to get back out on a bike, which you did a lot in your youth, less as you got older? How did it feel to be free and active again after all the pain and suffering you got through? As anybody can imagine, it was just a life-changing experience. The feeling, the wind, the freedom was so exhilarating that I was I was just going to do everything I could to become a safe, accomplished writer. Mm-hmm. And actually, since then, I've ridden in um, Glacier National Park 250 miles oh, as part goodness. of the climate ride. Wow. I've ridden in Mammoth and Bryce and Zion, and I've climbed Mount Gibraltar in Santa Barbara, which is one of the top 50 cycling climbs in the world. I didn't know that. And I still average 100 miles a week riding locally. 100 miles a week. So if I had told you six years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago, as your husband's carefully carrying you on a mattress to work, (laughs) that you're going to be riding mountains. I predict you're going to be riding mountains and conquering trails, and you're going to be out there Uh pedaling in the, you know, right through the cars and the winding roads. You would have said what? Right. No. Um, you know what? When when you're so messed up, you're really only thinking one day at a time. Yeah. Well, you know, bet. you're constantly yeah. thinking, plotting with your physicians, with physical therapists. You're plotting your return back to life because what exists is so miserable and unacceptable. Yeah. And actually, you know, I'm practicing medicine. My whole life is getting people and patients into a good, healthy life. The bike, actually, you know, my patients saw me riding it. I would come into work. I would (laughs) get off the bike. I would take my helmet off, my riding jacket off. I was actually parking my bike inside my office. So as the doors were open (laughs) and the patients were in their rooms and the doors were open until I got in, they saw me (laughs) wheeling the bike into my back office. And they had been with me. I mean, I was in practice for 37 years, so they saw all my various physical struggles and surgeries. As And they're uh, cheering you on. They're saying, this is going right. to sound silly, right. I know. I know I'm, I'm, I'm saying too much of this, but it's almost like you were writing a prescription for their life, too. You were showing them how to oh. live a half of your life. Oh, you bet. Absolutely, because you know what? If somebody, I mean, I'm going to be 68 in a few days. Okay. So I started writing, you know, I started writing to work when I was, what, 61? Right. So, or 62. So we're if around the same age have, here. I, I believe me, yeah. everything you're saying is resonating with me. I so, didn't have all the so, health issues. That I, nobody hit me in the back of my car here. Yeah. Yeah. So if somebody in their 60s has had 30 surgeries, most oh. of them orthopedic and had spinal stenosis, knee surgery, back surgery, all this stuff. Somebody like me, who's not an athlete, but just somebody who loves the physical freedom of engaging with the environment. Yeah, feeling the wind, uh, being in touch with the other surroundings, right? Right, right. So if I could do it. Sounds like anybody can do it. it. If Dr. Feelgood, who didn't feel so good for a long time, 
Yeah, right. Wow, what an amazing story right. here. So now, how right. often do you ride? You retired, you said. So now what do you do with your time? Right, right. Well, actually, initially, I was going to also volunteer a couple of days a week at the Kennedy Hill Free Clinic, but then COVID hit. Yeah. So that sort of squashed it, but I'm still maintaining my license because I still have, you know, for a variety of reasons, medicine is always going to be a part of my life. I'll bet. It has to do with taking care of myself, my husband, my family, still wanting to volunteer now that we're both fully vaccinated. I ride to get around. I ride to meet up with my friends. I ride to the market. I ride at the beach. It's still a part of my life, just as it was before. We got a Revel Sprinter van for bubble travel when COVID hit. Oh, Everything cool. shut yeah. down. Yeah. So we have a bike rack. We actually schlepped the e-bikes with us. Um, <laughs> Is that the official to, term bike riders use? Let's schlep the bike over here. Let's schlep the bike along. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we got, you know, I always had the uh, bike rack, you know, for the car. Yeah. And you never so know when the urge will the strike and the moment will be right. Right, right. We, you know, we took the bike for thousands of miles to ride in national parks, to ride in Aspen, rode up to Maroon Bells. Anytime I go to a different city, I, I visit the bike shop. I Google all kinds of bike routes. You know, I start researching the area. Visiting bike shops is really good for all kinds of tips. I scope out the area where I'm, where I'm going to ride. I have two pedagogues, actually, two interceptors. So then my husband, out of love and duty. <laughs> love uh, and duty. I, I know you threw that one. Right. Honey, you got to do this. Come on. Right, right, right. So when it comes to like certain epic rides, you know, he'll he'll do them with me. His thing is horse riding and the motorcycle, but he knows that once in a while as we travel, uh, and see these magnificent areas like in, you know, Bryce Canyon sure. was one of oh, them. Wow. Yeah. And uh, riding up in Aspen. You know, so certain rides he knows that are just so epic, he has to do them with me. And he can actually last 30 miles before his bike just gets to There you go. Floor. If I had him on, I know he's not there at the moment because you mentioned he's out yeah. uh, running oh, an air. He actually. Way. Yeah, he actually just got home. It's not his thing, but he'll he'll do it with me for these epic rides. And what does he and say, though, in the great... change in you? must make him smile pretty big time to see oh, you get um, back out in the he's world again. incredibly supportive because my health, I mean, gradually, as I slowly gained weight with menopause and inactivity with yeah. all my, I don't want to call it disability issues, but with all the health issues, I'd slowly gained 20 pounds and in the last six years of writing, I've slowly lost those 20 pounds. So I'm go. back to the weight that I was when I was, what, 16, 18 years old? You're, um, you're living so the life you did I, when you're 16, 18. You're, you're free again. Yeah. The bike gives us freedom yeah. when we're young, and then somewhere along the way, we get consumed by other things, and we put it aside, and we think that's just, that was of, of well, my youth. Gr- right. Well, the great thing about the e-bike is, again, you can use it for commuting, you can use it for shopping. You can use it for meetup. I have grandkids, especially one of my grandsons is a fanatic bike rider. He's seven and a half. Seven and, and a half. And uh, yeah. grandma just can't wait till he fits into an e-bike because no matter what, we live in a hilly area, mm-hmm. so he's going to have trouble with the hills no matter what. So I can't wait to get him on the e-bike. And and, you know, not everybody is athletic. As much as I love adventure and physical activity. Can't always do it. I could never, because of a lot of genetic issues, I could never be very athletic. So the e-bike is a great equalizer where it allows any mortal, any mortal human. That's, that's a pretty big to, category of people. Any mortal human can uh, get on a bike and ride. Any human. I mean, you know. Yeah, with certain understanding. Can yeah. ride a bike flat. Right. Can now ride hills and ride long pretty much wherever they want to go. E bikes are just a great equalizer to allow mortals to enjoy cycling in very in virtually any circumstance and not be an athlete. We're gonna to have to start using the term the great equalizer. Thank you, Doctor Miriam Lieberman, for joining <laughs> us today here. 
it shows that you gained your equilibrium again. You gained your balance in life, and yeah. you got back out yeah. in the world again through yeah. a lot of grit and determination yeah. and the and the, the e-bike revolution. We got you riding again. Hooray. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks Absolutely. so much. Thanks so much for joining us here okay. today, Here. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Well, if that's not an amazing journey, I don't know what is. One more reason you got to join us as we ride along. The most amazing love stories, the most incredible things happening. It's all part of the e-bike revolution and the Pedigo podcast. As we talk to the entrepreneurs behind the movement and the love stories, all those riding along. For more information, visit pedigo.com. That's P-E-D-E-G-O, pedigo.com. Our contact is here at the station, Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio. Dot net.